pull on the rod. Right so there's spot. one right in front of the other, right? Yep. Here he comes, y'all. There he comes. So day one, we were out there looking for kudu. We worked a stalk. I don't even see him. Yeah, he's gone into that thicket. The kudu evaded us, but within that stalk, we peered over to our left. Careful, careful, here's a buffalo, here's a buffalo. Wow, he is a beauty. That is. You guys don't know the bank any money. He looks like he's coming to collect something. Yeah. Actually, my favorite description is mean as a half-ton hemorrhoid. He's pissed off too, look at him. You know, for your first African experience was just impressive. Just move a little bit this way. Just move a little bit this way. The beauty was, if he charged, he was free. <laughs> Giant Cape Buffalo is just one of the big game sites you can expect to see at E Zulu Game Reserve in the heart of South Africa's Eastern Cape. For World of Beretta host and author Chris Dorsey, this is a chance to introduce friend Dan Flavin to the Africa Dorsey's known for decades. Having hunted the Big Five and most of the other African game has only deepened Dorsey's passion for the continent. You can hunt all over the world. You can have incredible experiences, and it will be similar, yet distinctly different than the safari experience in Africa. It's such a unique experience that you just want to share it with the right kind of people and people that would appreciate it as much as, as you do. Chris Dorsey and I have been hunting the last couple years together out in Nebraska. So this was my first opportunity to leave the North American continent to go on a hunt. And it was just uh, something I, I had no idea what to anticipate. I love sharing Africa with people who haven't been, particularly when they're really enthusiastic, really passionate about it, and really appreciate all that Africa is, the most wonderful hunting Eden, frankly, in the world. Jeez, rhinos right over here. That's, uh, that's incredible. Being able to look out into the plains of South Africa and seeing zebra and wildebeest and kudu and giraffe and Cape buffalo, it was just a real emotional opportunity for me, and I, I'm just thrilled that I have the chance to experience it. At Izuna, we pride ourselves with custom-made safaris. Most people uh, can see up to 30 different species on our safari. Now going to Izulu, it's 75,000 acres. We call those national forests in the United States. And it's a huge property, it's a stunning property, and the diversity of game in that property was as good as I've seen anywhere. Looking for Gemsbuck, buddy. <laughs> you know, first up for Dan to hunt was Gemsbuck. It's right under the tree. Okay, let's go. Oh, those Gemsbuck are smart. It reminds me that when they're just walking like it, you think, oh, I'm gonna catch up to them now. Yeah. You put on 200 yards and they pull 300 yards. Well, they cover some ground, don't they? They're gonna play, they're gonna play serious cat and mouse with us. Yeah. We work this, this herd over in open plains. Oh, so we've got so many eyes watching us. They're herd animals, so there's lots of sets of eyes, so you're not just getting past one, you're trying to kind of sort out, how do I get to the one I want through the 50 that are looking at me? So we really got in there and, and stalked. We got the wind right, we got the sun right. I said to Dan, well, th this is not gonna be an easy one. Okay, this is the backside. Okay, he's coming out from left to right. Okay, wait for him, wait for him. And we stalked up to some thick brush and they were coming from left to right. And I put Dan up on the sticks. The big bull came walking out to the right. Okay, there it's gonna stand. There you go, there you go. Take him. Right there. Oh, just, just, just under. God. Just watch him, they're running. Watch him, watch him. I don't see any blood. No blood. It just was literally just a matter of inches. Every yeah. animal deserves a warning shot. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's get to the first time for real, huh? Yeah. It's easy to get down on yourself a little bit when you're in Africa because you just want everything to be perfect because it, it's a dream come true. But we just kind of shook down a little bit and, and the beauty of Africa is there's always an opportunity around the next bandit. Again, it's back over here. Yeah. There, we, there we go. Right here. Right here. Let's have a look. That's a big group, huh? Yeah, it's a big group. Like big 18, 20 of them right there. There's a big bull in the back, see him working his way from left to right. There he comes. Got him. He's going to stand. Yeah, yep. there we go. Okay. Let's get in after him. Let's go, let's go. We get a chance there. There's a good one there. Okay, see him. He's moving from the right to left. 
and then I mean I just peeked across at Dan and he just you know was ready to kill he had the, the adrenaline was going and he had that killer instinct you know to take him down he just he got rock solid okay, he's gonna stand now wait he's gonna stand okay take him Great shot. <laughs> Great <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Solid shot. Well, well done. done, man. Thank you very much. Awesome. Well Bloody done, Thank you. Fantastic shooting. To put down. Let's get him. Down. Let's well get done, him. Daniel. Oh my God, my first African animal. He's got mass. He's got length. He's got it all. Look, we've just got a fantastic mass on this. He's really thick, but then he's extremely long at the same time, and he's nice and wide. This is an absolutely fantastic trophy. You know, you could just see in his face, it was, you know, this was the culmination. Your first Wait, animal in Africa is just something you don't forget. Get a couple right there, here we go. One, two, three. You know, you can only have that first experience one time. And, and I think that's part of the enjoyment I get taking people back to Africa, is I see in their faces what it was like for me to go to the first time. And I think, hey, it's about these memories, isn't it? Okay, he's gonna stand now. Wait, he's gonna stand. Okay, take him. For hunter Dan Great Flavin shot. on his initial African safari, his first big game animal's been a massive gemsbok. Now the hunt's on for the icon of spiral horns, the antelope of Hemingway's quest, the greater kudu. Beautiful animals, aren't they? Just magnificent. The kudu, you've just got the the classic Hemingway gray ghost, you know, I mean, they're there and then they're gone like smoke. I mean, it's amazing to watch these animals sort of move very fluidly in the cover, sort of only coming out really well right at last light or first light. So it's always a challenging hunt. It's always a fun hunt. There's a kudu bull right there. Gray ghost. There he goes. And there and gone in a blink. We had uh, actually a couple opportunities on the uh, first day. Here they come, here they come. Here he comes. No, 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 no. But they evaded us. So we held out all week, and with about 20 minutes of light left on the last day of our hunt, our guide Roxy and I, we spotted this kudu. He was a mature bull. The right or the left? That's him, the one running. See the one running? Gotcha. Instantly, Roxy, my PH, and I connected. This was a bull that we had to get after. The bull took off. Monster. The one standing there is big. That one was big. You, but what can you do? He just faded out, walked away from us, and over the top of the mountain range, which was a little frustrating, but I think it was the right call to let him go up over the top rather than trying to risk a shot. You know, the big kudu bulls, the great ghost, he's just not gonna make it easy for you. Come down, come down, come down, come down. We went after that bull. Okay, there the kudus are there. There the kudus, let me just look. Wait, let me just look, let me look. Okay, there he is. Okay, there he is, Dan. He's one right at the back. See them coming, they're they working no. their way down. They were walking, they were on the move. He joined up with a couple of bulls, went into a, a big, out the other side on a big ravine. I mean, we were at the last light. Dan, he's, they're coming through, okay? He's the big one, he's fourth in line, 420 yards. You see him walking, he's walking up at an angle behind, the, behind that bull. You see him there, Dan? Yep. Okay, wait for him to stop, wait for him to stop. It's a hell of a long shot, come. Give me your thing. We ran down this massive, massive mountain. You know, there's a lot of loose boulders and thick brush and we were just crashing through there. We, the excitement was high and eventually we came up on this kudu. I said to Dan, you can just see his horns and he, he just sort of ran out to the one side and the grey ghost, we had eventually got him. Okay, there he is. Smoke him. Take him. Whoa! Yes, yes man! Yeah! Woo! What a kudu! <laughs> to see that, that kudu bull just crash down when Dan absolutely smashed him with the Sarko 300 win mag. You know what I mean? We were just really just pumped up and high fives and you know, we were just going crazy. It was like a hunt of a lifetime. And that is, I mean, Dan, look at his thickness and look at the ridge line coming up. He's just got an awesome ridge line. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> you, awesome stuff. <laughs> One thing I've heard from a lot of people is that on your trip back from Africa, you will be planning your next trip to Africa. It's a tough concept to get your arms around because you're doing all the planning, all the preparation for this hunt of a lifetime. 
And yet I found myself in that very same position on my flight back, trying to figure out what game I what didn't take, what I would like to take, what I saw that I didn't even know about, and how do I get back? I definitely want to go back.